Hello friends, welcome back to Dear Dummy. Hope your preparation is going very well. Here we are continuing with the current affairs for the upcoming prelims examination. So in this lecture, we will continue with our science and technology current affairs. This is part 14 of the lecture. Hope you have seen the other 13 parts. So in this lecture, we will cover the information communication technology ICT current affairs. In the, all the 13 parts, we have already covered various defense and space related current affairs from the last one and a half year. So, now we start our artificial intelligence, robotics and other technologies. So, in this lecture, we cover in-flight Wi-Fi. There are a lot of talks about the in-flight Wi-Fi, what is in-flight Wi-Fi and how it is done and all. We will talk about that. After that, we will see what is MAC binding, why it was in use. After that, we will see is 3.0. After that, हम देखते हैं रेस 2020 के बारे में हम देखते हैं जॉइंट स्टडी ऑन यूजिंग आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस इन एग्रीकल्चर एंड वो यू किस कंपनीज के साथ आई मीन किस कंपनीज के बीच में साइन हुआ उसके बाद हम देखते हैं मार्केट इंटेलिजेंस एंड अर्ली वार्निंग सिस्टम्स वेब पोर्टल किसने लॉन्च किया किस लिए लॉन्च किया हम देखते हैं वो उसके बाद वी विल टॉक अबाउट रामानुजन मशीन एंड फाइनली वी विल सी व्हाट इज डेटा लोकलाइजेशन तो चलिए शुरू करते हैं फर्स्ट इन फ्लाइट वाईफाई so these days there are a lot of talks about the in-flight Wi-Fi. What is in-flight Wi-Fi? So till now we are not able to use internet services when we are on flight. When we are flying, we, we till now we are not able to use internet. You now before the flight takeoff, the flight attendant will tell us to switch off our mobiles. So till now that was the situation, but now situation is going to change. We, are go we will be able to use in-flight Wi-Fi. That means फ्लाइट में वाईफाई होते हैं और इस वाईफाई को हम सभी यूज कर वी विल बी एबल टू यूज देम हम सभी यूज कर सकते हैं तो द गवर्नमेंट ने गवर्नमेंट ने उसके लिए परमिशन दिया द गवर्नमेंट हैज परमिटेड एयरलाइंस ऑपरेटिंग इन इंडिया टू प्रोवाइड इन फ्लाइट वाईफाई सर्विस टू वे पैसेंजर्स सो सभी एयरलाइंस के लिए गवर्नमेंट ने परमिशन दे दिया तो टेलीकॉम कमीशन ने भी ग्रीन सिग्नल दे दिया इन सभी कनेक्टिविटी के लिए एंड द पायलट वो कौन करते हैं हु विल स्विच इट ऑन स्विच ऑफ इट इज द पायलट the pilot may permit the access of internet by the passengers on board an aircraft through Wi-Fi on board. So with that, you will be able to use your smartphones, laptops, tablets, smartwatches and everything you will be able to use because of the in-flight Wi-Fi. How this in-flight Wi-Fi works? The in-flight Wi-Fi, it works in two stages. The first stage, the first stage is the terrestrial connectivity and the second stage is the satellite connectivity. So through the terrestrial connectivity, you will be able to use internet till the flight reaches 3000 meters height. So let's say this is the takeoff point and the flight will reach somewhere. This is the maximum height of 3000 meters that is 3 kilometers. So yahaan se yahaan tak, you will be able to use the terrestrial network, you know, terrestrial connection which is provided by the various network operators. You will be able to use that internet. After going, you know, this 3000 meters, you will not be using this terrestrial network. You will then be using the satellite network. Satellite network. Okay. So this is how it works. It works in two stages. Terrestrial network and the satellite network. Till the flight reaches a certain point. Let's say 3 kilometers. Till that time. You will be able. You will be using. The, the flight will be using the terrestrial network. For providing Wi-Fi to the customers. After reaching 3 kilometers. The flight will be using the satellite connection for providing internet to the customers. So through this way, what is the advantage? The advantage is that you will be able to use the internet seamlessly. So internet will be there continuously for every passenger. Okay, that is the advantage of this. So what are the challenges ahead for this? There are a lot of challenges in anything. Challenges are ought to be there. Is my challenges kya hai? Is my challenges ye hai? Pehle, the initial cost is very high. First, all the aircrafts. They have to, you know, they have to bring in this system. They, ha they have to, you know, change a lot of things in their aircraft so that they have to, you know, so that they will be able to provide the Wi-Fi. They have to bring new routers. They have to bring new equipment and all. For that, there is a lot of initial cost they have to bear. The airlines in India are already facing a lot of cash crunch. We know the situation of Indian airlines. We know the situation what happened to the jet airways. So when the aircraft market is not that great, when you know when the aircraft companies are facing a lot of hurdles, so this becomes a, you know this becomes much more burden on the on the aircraft companies, on the plane companies. Apart from the equipment, airlines also will have to bear the additional fuel cost. Why additional fuel cost? Because they will be carrying new equipment. When they will be carrying new equipment, uska weight bhi hoga. 
तो उस वेट को कैरी करने के लिए दे विल हैव टू हैव एक्स्ट्रा फ्यूल दे विल हैव टू बर्न एक्स्ट्रा फ्यूल इसके लिए एडिशनल फ्यूल कॉस्ट होते हैं एवरी एयरक्राफ्ट के लिए ओके दैट इज अबाउट द इन फ्लाइट वाई फाई तो हु गिव द परमिशन द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एंड द टेलीकॉम अथॉरिटी हैव गिवन द परमिशन नेक्स्ट मैक बाइंडिंग वॉट इज मैक बाइंडिंग एंड वाइट वॉज इन न्यूज तो एज यू नो August 5th, 2019 is the day when the Union Government of India has abrogated Article 35A and Article 374. That is, they have you know removed the special status for Jammu and Kashmir. After that, the Union Government has suspended the internet in Jammu and Kashmir to stop the illegal activities and to stop the spread of the fake news and all. You know, to pro to provide security and to reduce the threat to the people, they have they have you know stopped the internet. now the union government has said that in recent orders internet has been restored in jammu and kashmir but the connectivity which is provided in jammu and kashmir will be different in what way it is different it will be different by making internet available through mac binding so mac binding will be there in jammu and kashmir now what is this mac binding so generally every device will have a mac number the media access number every device be it your mobile phone be it your laptop or any device which can access will have a which can access internet will have a mac address that is media access control address it is a hardware identification number so the companies the companies which are manufacturing this will give that number hardware identification number it looks somewhat like this it is this long string when your device it is accessing the internet it will have a ip address it will have a ip address so what does this ip address do the ip address it will tell the service operator that so and so person at so and so place is using you know so the internet operator let's say let's say airtel is internet operator so airtel will assign this ip address to every device like let's say you're using your mobile your mobile will have an ip address you know your laptop will have an ip address or you can say your router especially the router with which you are connecting that will have a separate ip address that is what ip address means okay so who is providing this the internet operator is providing this ip address now what is happening in this mac binding is both the mac number and the ip address they will be combined they will be combined and internet will be provided why generally the people you know who want to spread fake news and who don't want to get caught you know internet is a very opaque place they will change their ip address there are provisions to change the ip address and they can you know use the internet when ip address is changed it is very difficult to track they will use the ip address of you know somewhere of another country like let's say in europe somewhere or in africa they will use some ip address of that country and they will do all the illegal activities then it will become very difficult for the law enforcement agencies to stop them so easily easily the government is plan the government has planned to combine both ip address and mac address so if ip address is changed or mac address is changed if there is any mismatch between them then the internet will not get connected if there is any mismatch between the ip and mac then the internet will not get connected so in this way in this way the government is not letting the fake users or you can say the users who want to spread false information or fake news in the internet the government can track them easily because they will not be able to use different ip address and the government can track them easily if they do any illegal activity or, or unlawful activity this is about the mac binding mac binding is binding of mac address and ip address next one is 3.0 for tech enabled banking so what is this is 3.0 is is enhanced access and service excellence 3.0 reform agenda it aims at providing smart tech enabled public sector banking for aspiring india so that is its aim its main aim is to provide the you know tech provide the latest tech and also it it want to create a citizen centric banking using technology that is the main aim mainly this is for the public sector banks that is the main aim of this is 3.0 it is to establish paperless and digitally enabled banking paperless and digitally enabled banking what is this paperless and digitally enabled banking it means you know normally when you go to a bank you will you know you will have to use dd or you will have to take loans you will have to open an account for all of these things you need to, you need to you know do some paperwork you need to fill some application form and all so it's a paperwork 
Now this is 3.0, it is trying to make sure that all the paperwork is gone, everything is done online itself, that is the main aim of this is 3.0. So what are the new features added? The new features in this 3.0 added are Palm Banking for end-to-end -end digital delivery of financial services. Palm Banking is a new thing. Banking on go via ease banking outlets at frequent visited spots like malls, stations, complex and campus. So these are the new features that are included in Ease 3.0. So when the Ease was launched, Ease was originally launched in Jan 2018. A subsequent edition, Ease 2.0 was built later year. Okay. Now in 2020, we are talking about Ease 3.0. In Ease 2.0, the government had proposed pushing liquidity, liquidity into the public sector banks, reconstituting management committees and possible mergers among the ideal partners in the banking industry. So, the, all these things have been done, liquidity have been pumped, in, pumped into the public sector banks because all the banks are facing the issue of NPS, they needed capital in order to lend loans. So, easily the government has pumped in the liquidity in the public sector banks. And also, it has reconstituted the management committees for the banks because yes, you know, the management of the banks has become, crit has become you know, critical in these, in these days. Why it has become critical? It has become critical because these days we are seeing all of these frauds, the NPS has been increasing, you know, a lot of frauds are taking place. So the management of the banks is a very important thing. Recently, the S-Bank collapsed. It did not collapse. In fact, you know, it, 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 it became, you know, it came to the verge of collapse. So then RBI saved it along with the public sector banks. So, you know, to avoid all these things, the government has, you know, the government has pumped in the money and also the government has set up um, reconstituted management committees with the, and also it's looking upon the options for the mergers among the ideal partners in the Indian banking sector. So, what is RACE 2020? The RACE 2020 was news. What is this RACE 2020? The RACE 2020 is the maiden summit on artificial intelligence to spearhead social empowerment, inclusion and transformation. So, RACE is the summit on artificial intelligence. The event named RACE Responsible AI for Social Empowerment will be held in October in New Delhi. Initially, it had to be held in April 2020, but later it was postponed to October 2020. The event named RACE 2020. You no, know, this will be held. This is India's first artificial intelligence summit. It is to be organized by the government of India in partnership with the industry and academia. It is the first artificial intelligence, you know, net artificial intelligence summit of India. That's why this becomes more important. Rise 2020. It is the first artificial intelligence summit because all these days, all the new new technologies that are developing, we are talking about artificial intelligence. We are ta talking about the data sciences. We are talking about robotics. So, if any summit or any current affair that comes in these areas, it is very important for us. Last year, in the prelims, we have seen questions were asked on various things, various latest technologies like the virtual reality, VR, the augmented reality, AR, all of these things, we, you know, they, they, were, they came in the exam directly. So, if any new technology comes or if any, you know, summit happens, which is first of its kind in India, keep that in mind, you have to study that. Okay, so that is about RACE 2020, which is the first artificial intelligence summit in India. Next, the joint study on using AI in agriculture, artificial intelligence agriculture. It is a very big thing. It's, it's a new thing. So, Union Minister of Agriculture and Farm of Welfare has signed a statement of interest with the IBM. IBM is an Indian private sector software company for undertaking a private, uh, for undertaking a pilot study to artificial intelligence, to artificial intelligence and weather technology solutions. So, using artificial intelligence, they will be, they will be able to provide solutions for the weather, you know, for the weather changes and all. So, this will be implemented in as a pilot project in few districts. That is about this joint study. It was between the Union Ministry of Agriculture and IBM and IBM. Next one, the market intelligence and early warning system. What is this market intelligence and early warning system? It is a new web portal. It is this web portal is launched by the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Process Ministry of you know, Food Processing and Industries, not Agriculture, Ministry of Food Processing and Industries. Why this was launched? This was launched for the real-time monitoring, real-time monitoring of the price of top crops. Top is the tomato onion potato you know last year we have seen the price of onions have you know they have risen to up to 150 rupees per kg so these crops mainly for these crops what happens is that the prices fluctuates very fastly so you know to avoid all these things you know to avoid all these things the government ha the government made sure that they have some buffer and also they have introduced schemes like operation green and all 
so this market intelligence and early warning system this is part of this operations green only where in which we will use various new technologies in order to forecast the changes in prices and the risks that this poses okay that is about the market intelligence and early warning system so as i told you already this portal would disseminate all relevant information related to top crops such as prices and arrival so what are the prices from where they are coming the yield and production the import and export the crop calendars the crop agronomy etc everything will be provided in this web portal okay so that you know when all the information is there it will be very useful for us to forecast whether there will be any demand deficient or whether there will be any excess demand or what how the prices are going to be all of these things we will know you know if we you know if we get to know about this market intelligence and early warning system web portal we can know by using this next one ramanujan machine ramanujan machine was in use who built this ramanujan machine the techion which is a israel institute of technology techion this institute has built the ramanujan machine and the machine has been built by them and it was named after famous indian scientist srinivas ramanujan he is the greatest mathematician of india one of the greatest you can say so it is an algorithm the ramanujan machine is an algorithm that reflects the way srinivas ramanujan worked during his brief life so he lived he lived a very short life so during the life he led he has developed various solutions so he his, his thinking is very unique so what what these people have done is you know generally to in order to you know in any program how it will be there is if we give the problem we will get the solution but here in this machine it is different we know the solution what we are trying to get is we are trying to get the question so that using reverse engineering we will be able to understand how ramanujan used to think how he used to solve the problems and all we will be able to think so that's why this is important so in most computers human input a program and ex and expect the algorithm to work out a solution so we will give the input values and all and we will expect the computer to perform and give us a solution so in this machine what will have it will happen the other way around so we will be giving the answer and we will be getting the question let's say the answer is pi there are a lot of ways where we can get pi there are a lot of ways so these ways will be given as a question by the ramanujan machine next one data localization these days we are talking about data localization what is data localization all about data localization is the act of storing data on any device that is physically present within the borders of a specific country where data was generated so as you know internet doesn't have borders a server somewhere in america can provide data to the internet users in india so in return what they will get they will get the user data they will get the user data so where this data will be stored this data will be stored somewhere in america somewhere in america let's say they show let's say the app called tiktok the tiktok has the apps has the server somewhere in china so while we are accessing this app while we are accessing this app of tiktok what we are doing is we are accessing the server which is there in china this server also it will take the data of the user who is using those that app and it will store in the same server as that of the data where is data is located so that is china so what is happening in this case is the data is being transferred from one country to another country data is transferred from one country to another country where the server is stored so that means the data is being sent the data is been exported but the government is not getting anything and also the privacy threat to the people is increasing because of this so that is why they have introduced the, the government has introduced this concept of data localization where in which every mnc they will store data within the borders let's say amazon let's say amazon okay this is an mnc this is a foreign company let's say tiktok this is a foreign company let's say paypal this is a foreign company so all these companies they will store data in the in, in the within the border that is in india only they will be able to store the data in india only okay they will have to store in fact american digital company payments player paypal is working with its partners on localization of data as mandated by the rbi so rbi has mandated this where in which all the financial data is has to be stored locally okay so Pay paypal is working on the partner with the loc for the localization of data that is about the data localization now let's revise what we have studied so we have seen about in flight wifi where in which the permission has been given to the aircraft to provide the in flight wifi next we talked about the mac binding 
where the MAC address and the IP address will be bound will be bound together in order to get internet. Next is 3.0 for tech-enabled banking. So these reforms are introduced in order to provide citizen-centric services in the banking sector. We talked about the Race 2020. Race 2020 is an artificial intelligence, you know, artificial intelligence. Um, a summit in India, which is going to be organized in India in October. This is the first summit that will be organized in India, first summit on artificial intelligence. Next, the joint study on using agriculture and artificial intelligence in agriculture. The MOU has been signed between the Minister of Agriculture and, Infos and IBM company and IBM. Next, market intelligence and early warning system. The web portal, this was launched by the Minister of Food Processing, where in which, where in which, you know, all the all the uh, you know price variation that happens in the top crops tomato onion potato because any any change will affect the uh, will affect the price of these crops very hugely which will impact the customers and the and the farmers as well so in order to forecast all these things the market intelligence and early warning system has been has been introduced next ramanujam machine it was developed by the israeli institute where in which they will try to you know they will try to analyze the thinking pattern of ramanujan and they will try to see how ramanujan used to solve questions next data localization data localization is the saving of data obtained by various websites locally that is within the boundary of the country okay so that's it friends in this lecture i'll see you again in the next lecture till then keep studying and stay tuned jai hind